Good afternoon, toy people, and I am so glad to be here. Thank you to the WTHRA uh, here at Toy Fest, and also my friend Tanya Margatis, who invited me, the Director of Sales at Golden Sales. So, over the next 30 minutes or so, I want to paint a picture of where we are today with sales trends and data, factual, and where we might see ourselves in five years. So I want you to think about where will you be in five years and what will be your competitive advantage. What this is, is me trying to present ideas, get you to think, and get you to really have a forward-looking view of our industry because that is not done all that often. But first, let's look at some data and some facts. 2019 was a very tough year in the, in the toy business. Most people were down, including the uh, big boxes. 2020, of course, pandemic, nobody saw that coming. And then 2021, 22, 23 were rebound years. And again, nobody, nobody saw 21 coming with the increase in, in uh, sales and in particularly independence and uh, the growth of the fidget category sensory products and all that that just went on and on and on. So here we are now in 2024, coming off of a 2023 though that ended weekly. In fact, the U.S. sales data indicates a minus eight overall in the U.S. toy industry. Indies held up, I believe, a little bit better. So what do we look forward now in 2024? Well, January was weak for a lot of reasons. February rebounded nicely, and now March, I think, will see up because of the early Easter season. My concern will be what happens in April, May, and June. The best case I see for 2024 is a flat market coming off that minus eight, but it perhaps could drop as low as three, four percent. If you do better than that, you're gaining share you're hanging in there. On a category basis, what are we seeing the last 12 months? Well, in terms of category percent of sales, we have the plush category at 13.1%, fashion and tween at 10.1%. Five years ago, that was pretty much non-existent for us. Number three is arts and crafts at 9%. Compounds and slime at 8.4%, and then the building construction, which for us is mostly Lego, 8.3%. I'll throw in one last one. It's smaller, but still growing and important is Pokemon Card. Uh, that is up to three, almost 4% of our business. So you look at those five or six categories, you now have 53% of our sales. So that's what's selling the sleeper there is the fashion tween market. We also know this by sales by the five senses. And I look at this coming out of COVID because it really is where kids are at today. Number one, sales of the touch, feel, textures category. 56% uh, of our sales uh, are in that particular category. Number two, smells, 22%. And you put one and two together, for instance, like a dope slime product that has textures plus smell, very, very huge, and, and why it's still doing so well with our kids. Number three is taste, think hot, uh, country origin, uh, sweet and sour, all of those taste features. And that's why you see snack companies coming out with a snack of the week, really, with different flavors. Number four are sounds. Think ASMR, calming, relaxing, as well as, uh, as I said, a lot of ASMR videos. And number five is sight. Years ago, when people introduced a toddler toy or even infant, lights and sounds, bells and whistles was all the rage. Not so much anymore. I did one more thing. Over this four-year period, 20 through 24, or beginning of 24, I looked at all these categories, 
And do you know what emerged as number one? Any guesses? That's right, fidget toys. It is a bona fide, legitimate category that continues to grow. And in fact, one in five dollars, one in five has come from the fidget category over those years. That was followed by plush, preschool, and arts and crafts. So make no bones about it. These are the types of things that inventors, distributors, reps, retailers, and uh, suppliers need to hone in on of where the audiences are for kids today. So what can this tell you about your design products? What can it tell you about your distribution of products and the texture of products? Because I think it really reflects where, as I said, the audience of kids are today, but more importantly, where is it going? What will it be like in three to five to 10 years? And what will be your competitive advantage over this time. So to recap, coming off of a week overall U.S. toy year, Indies holding in there, probably stronger than pre-pandemic, up about 20% versus 18-19 in, in volume, but we are now facing a challenge where we have to continue to fight the big guys uh, online and some other things and that's what I want to look at now. Did you know online sales in the U.S. of toys right now is 40 plus percent? Think of that. Before Amazon, when I opened in 1996, now 40 percent of that market is simply lifted and gone away. Maybe more, probably more. Walmart, Amazon, and Target capture 75 percent of the toy U.S. market. Okay, so at least 25% of which indies, roughly about a billion and a half, which is still a very big niche for about 1,500 uh, to 1,400 uh, true toy stores. But let's face it, everybody, everybody wants to sell toys from your neighborhood uh, 7-Eleven to a, uh, a gas station to grocery stores, drug stores, and, and everything else. So what are we doing to try to protect this niche that everybody is attacking? Well, I think we're at a point where we have a once in a lifetime generational opportunity to do something about it. And as I look through my future, I say, what can I control? Not what I can't control. Well, I can't control prices, I can't control distribution, I can't control uh, online, I can't control new social media platforms, I can't control uh, pandemics, all those things. But what can I control? What can we control? And that's where I focus in. And there's only one thing that I have seen and or in consultation with many of the experts is what I do in store, in my walls of my store. And the best thing I can do is raise the level of this service and become experts in not only toys, but play. We know there's a mental health crisis. We know the MESH initiative is rolling out. We know we have all these concerns from parents, grandparents, and kids. I really want to be the pharmacist of toys. I want to be that go-to place in my community that the pharmacist is on duty, okay? Or in this case, a certified play expert is on duty to assist you. Recommendations, talk to you, understand where you're at. Today, just a joy pick-me-up item, or do you need comfort? Or do you need to build skills for resiliency over time and problem solving and, and communication skills. That's why I'm advocating and we already have four associates that are trained and gone to school with 
the ASTRA Certified Play Expert Training Program. They also have been through MESH training, mental, emotional, social health, so that, again, we can relate to our customer in a whole different light. Because at the end of the day, our niche is our niche. It's much smaller. It will always be smaller. But when I look at all the competing forces, okay, Walmart, Target, grocery stores, everybody banging up against our firewall, okay, of which in the middle of it is our heart of our strategy. We have the best team, we curate the best products, and speed to shelf better than anybody, and we wow them. Wow them in store, wow them online, just in the way we merchandise, talk to people, phone, everything. You must wow. But this firewall, the firewall is the only thing I can control. And that is up against Amazon, Toys R Us, Costco, Barnes and Noble, you know, online retailers, you name it. We have to protect against it. And the only thing I know is that we relate to people and kids better than anybody else. We make our recommendations. We get the right curation of product locally, and then we tout it. We tell people, we, we ask them to engage with us. And I'm gonna to get to that at the end because we're gonna raise the bar on something. But let me read my definition of a certified play expert store. It's a toy retailer well-versed in the art and science of play that needs, that helps educate and recommend toys for children and adults that are of course fun they promote healthy and developmentally appropriate play. And earning this credential deepens the store's knowledge about child development and the vital importance of play through all ages into adult. It includes theories of child development, characteristics of those major developmental stages, types of play and benefits. And last but not least, we advocate for play. It's a right. All kids in the world need to play. Adults need to take time to play. Older senior citizens get more joy out of life if they play and the health benefits as well. So CPE, Certified Play Expertise, and I believe the customers understand that, certification, play expertise they get that if you put a generator in your house do you get anybody to fix it no you want a certified uh, plumber electrician generator expertise to fix that that's what we are in play okay and we're going to be on duty every hour every day to help people because I can control this. But we need to do one more thing. We need to move this concept of experiential retailing, which now, frankly, everybody talks about. You can be an online or, oh, I can give you the experience. Click here and there. Uh, walk in a store and you go, wow, this is experiential. But you may or may not buy stuff. So that experiential, yes, is great. We try to do it in our store, but now we need to go one step further and have engagement retail. And that's the connection between us and the customer. They may be wild, but the engagement will bring them towards selling. The engagement will bring them towards a connection, both with us in store, then when we do things in the community and they will come back to the expertise and the recommendations and buy from us. Because at the end of the day, we have to make money. We have to keep the dust off the museum, right? So this is how we want to stay in a profitable business, not just because we love toys. We have to generate profit. And that will cost us in a little different model than online and 
and the big box. But it will be worth it if we can connect with grandma and mom and kids in the right way. Make that right recommendation. Kid really enjoys it. I think we have a customer for a long time. And price will not differentiate that. Getting it delivered to home won't destroy that because they may not even know what to get. So certified play expertise has raised the C word in our store, confidence. Confidence to demo, confidence to talk to people, confidence to show people, confidence in what they do, their self-standing. What am I doing selling toys? Well, it's pretty darn important. So their level of confidence and self-esteem has risen as well. We must engage with a purpose, developing a feeling in the community of need, not want, versus nice to have, and almost a creation of FOMO, fear of missing out. Hey, if I don't check with Learning Express Toys in Lake Zuri, I don't even know what the new stuff is. Or Johnny found this on the playground and says, hey, this blue toy, I love it, I love it. Where did, what's the name of it? I don't know, but I got it at my local toy store. Because speed is important too. So we confidently carry out in the middle of this direction. Team, product, wow. Very simple mantra. I wake up every day and I think of three things. How's my team doing? Are they motivated, incentivized, trained, uh, compensated? Number two, do I have the right curation of products in the right amount, at the right prices, at the right value, in the right speed and timeline? And then thirdly, wowing people. But now we must move to the engagement phase. So that's my vision. Where we go over the next couple of years is do what we can control, not complain about what we can't control. Keep focused on TPW, but add in now the level of rising ourselves, rising ourselves to be on duty every day as the pharmacist of toys. I wish you well. Any comments or questions, please reach out on LinkedIn to me. I'm found there. And uh, thank you for having me. I hope you can get one nugget out of this that helps you. We need a lot more toy stores, not less. And the competition isn't amongst us toy stores. It's amongst the many other factors that have changed the dynamic of our universe. Thank you for listening. Until next time. Toy man out.